Hey there guys, welcome to another Train Sim Classic video. Today we got something special. A barn of many liveries. The beautiful, the one and only MLW M420 Wide Boy. Now this is going to be from Diesel Workshop who have previously released uh, several Alco and MLW Thank you very much to them for that, of course. The other one was Canadian National, uh, which I also did a video on. If you'd like to check that out, I'll try and pop in the top right-hand corner right about now. Uh, but this is for BC Rail. Uh, so it's an M420 pack. You're going to get three liveries. You're going to get boosters uh, as well. So booster units, B units, and it's $14. One four dot zero zero dollars that's it so the MLW a sister company to Alco even still producing after Alco shut its doors built the M420 between 1973 and 1977 at 80 or sorry 90 total units and 8 B units which uh, BC Rail got of course the majority went to CN while BC Rail received about 16 of these units B units included 8 and 8 the only railroad to receive B units as well and uh, the Providence and Worcester, uh, Robert Val and Saguenay and Ferrocarril de Pacifico got some of these from MLW as well. Now this logo was paramount in the fact that it paved the way for wide or comfort cabs, which became an industry standard. And here they are, the three that you will get with the pack. So continuing on with the industry standard. You know, it just meant more crew room. It was a safer operating environment. You could stretch your shite out a little bit more. They were warmer, insulated, uh, had better seating, a whole, a whole uh, myriad and list of things. Now, the Montreal Locomotive Works, or the MLW that built these, was very similar to Alco. In fact, they were a sister company, like I said, that continued to operate and produce long after uh, Alco shut its doors after some you know some strike and union bs i don't know all the details exactly but uh they kept on trucking and speaking of trucks one of the things they did was uh change the trucks so they didn't have the standard alco trucks they went to the uh, zero weight transfer trucks which you see here which are very interesting trucks indeed not only that but the 251c which was the prime mover in these they actually changed the turbo and a bit of the turbo system as well so they kind of had a spin uh on their own sound uh as well but these were very very cool locomotives these are easily one of the most recognizable north american locomotives like you see this you immediately know what it is there's no guessing is like is that a gp 38 is that a you know is that a gp40 you know none of that it's a friggin 420 now of course they did have six axles and some other variations as well not only that but just look at the livery on this thing god bless america yes these are canadian but they love america too as they should <laughs> And so they painted it red, white, and blue. Yeah, that's not why they did it. But still, it's glorious. It, it reminds me of like a 1980s uh, race car. Some kind of, you know, livery on a race car from the 80s. It just, it friggin' pops. It's in your face. It doesn't blend in with the scenery. You can see it from anywhere. The stripes, you know, the, the tricolor, top to bottom. The silver, you know, uh, chassis or underframe and trucks and all that. It's just epic these look amazing and so this of course is the thoroughbred of the pack now you're going to get the og uh so it's it's been called b call bc rail uh and it started as i think pacific great eastern so pacific great eastern this was their original paint job right here so they were kind of uh, you know, like when a railroad takes over another railroad kind of thing, they just kind of slap their numbers and logo on there. It was kind of like that uh, with the first iteration, uh, which is what you see here. So this is the, the colors, very similar to old Canadian National as well, you might have noticed. Uh, and then you have this one over here, which is like that one, obviously, but it's got the safety stripes on the nose so you can see it. 
I guess. Because of the stripes. And then it's got a lightning bolt down the side. Now what was cool about these as well is Montreal Locomotive Works built uh, B units or cabless booster units for the British Columbia Railway or BC Rail. Which that also comes with this pack. And how badass is that? I don't know what it is. I've always had this weird thing about cabless units. They're just cool i don't know I, I don't really have a rhyme or a reason uh you know it's just it looks like a locomotive with its head chopped off or something i don't know it's just it's it's cool so hostlers and yard and, and things like that would still be able to move these so they traditionally like a lot of cabless locomotives had controls at 26 l brake stand uh you know throttle controls they even had a horn i think it was like a single chime horn a uh, bell they could they could uh, I believe they could actuate the lights all that stuff they could pretty much do anything you could do in a locomotive if they needed to do any kind of reversing move in this uh, cabless booster unit they could do they just in this livery man I'm just sitting here grinning looking at this thing that is that is glorious very glorious all right I've got my system sounds turned down a little bit because these summon a biscuits are really really loud uh, so I'll, I'll turn them up once we go to run one in a moment here but the numbers are as follows they're of course uh, 16 8 and 8 8 you know regular units and then 8 uh, cabless units traditionally always paired as you would see here so the numbers of the A units were 640 through 647 so the uh, the one on the left here would have been the last one of that run and then 681 through 688 were the B units, which are, there's 83, let's just double check the numbers. Yeah, looks good, there's 87 right there. Now, one of the things I noticed, and I may be totally wrong, is the booster unit. So, I figured there would be a booster unit for the OG, uh, the one in the middle here, to kind of match it. So you see how the booster unit has the lightning stripe and the original up front, the A unit, does not. Now this one over here, this, the stripey boy uh, on the front and rear, that one matches the one over there that's, that's kind of like a heritage unit hearkening back to the original. So those both have stripes. So it's just odd because in the editor, uh, it's listed as, you know, B unit 1 and then B unit, two-tone B unit. So I don't know what's going on with that you know you guys that, that may know bc rail a little bit better did they not have any solid two-tone b units um there is this maybe just an oversight from diesel workshop it's probably not that you know these guys let's, let's talk about that for a minute these guys at diesel workshop have been pumping out the alcos the mlws and they're all really nice bang for buck there isn't much better out there. There's one. I don't have to name them because you know who they are. If you know, you know. And you do know. So don't pretend you don't. I ain't talking about DTM. Um, you know, so... <laughs> they, they have graced us with some absolutely epic models. These things look fantastic. They always come out very fresh and clean. Uh, so I don't know if it was an oversight, you know, as far as the stripe on the B unit or what, or if it was just like that. They didn't make them for the original unit. Because you'll notice as well, they didn't have the, uh, the rock lights. They called them the rock lights, so it was like two sets of ditch lights on these. So the original one did not have that. Now these two did. So this is a safety stripe on the front, which does have the rock lights. And then, of course, this sexy girl right here has them as well. So... You know, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have them painted for that one. I'm, I'm not totally sure what's going on there, but uh, it is very interesting indeed. And not to glaze over the actual railroad themselves, BC Rail, um, which came to be known as BC Rail. They kind of changed the name right before CN kind of took control of things. Uh, they began, of course, as the Pacific Great Eastern Railroad, Railroad which eventually became uh, British Columbia Railway, or BC Rail. 
uh, up to about 2004, it was the third largest railroad in Canada, naturally. Um, up until when did it happen? There was a lease at some point where they basically leased everything to Canadian National for a, it was like a contract term of 60 years. And so they got a long, long way to go into that uh, contract still. But they basically leased everything from their entire fleet, all their stock, you know, their, their infrastructure and all that, save for, I think there's a line or two that BC Rail still owns outright and runs outright. I cannot remember the name right now. It evades me. But uh, yeah, over 1,500 mile of trackage. So BC Rail was headquartered in, uh, I think, North Vancouver and basically ran the entirety of the extreme western you know province of canada some some crazy grueling yet beautiful terrain uh these things ran through and these with the red white and blue definitely stuck out um you know no matter what kind of terrain or weather they were just very very pretty so the cool thing about the rock lights as well so back to that they actually had two sets because you know they they operated these things in some grueling ass terrain and you know they had a lot of tight curves say there was uh some some rock on the ground that would have traditionally blocked one of the ditch lights at a certain height um you know the the other pair of ditch lights could have still seen around so they were bright af uh and you can actually see these lower ones are kind of angled inward, which is really cool. So they are angled inward, but they kind of, you know, it's like if you took the, the, the ditch lights and then just angled them outward. It's kind of the same effect, but they cross. It's like never crossing the streams, but they definitely cross this stream. And so they would have been super duper bright and would have been able to see quite a bit. But they're actually angle, angled uh, inward, which is pretty cool. So this one here, since it's angled inward, you know, it obviously would have faced mainly off to the right, like way over here, and so on. So enough about all that. The model, the actual unit themselves. Again, Diesel Workshop selling these at $14. What a steal. What a absolute steal. Again, the modeling, you know, looks pretty on point it's their you know it's their standard as of right now this thing looks really really nice um you know it, it looks organic it looks natural it looks well worn they're not super duper clean you know even on the white up here you got a bunch of smeg and smudging you know going on all over there the numbers of course the font and everything look appropriate it's you know it goes without saying now it's like searchlight simulation stuff it basically goes without saying i mean you don't have to reiterate because it's just it's good and they you know are the industry standard basically for north american train sim stuff and they probably will remain that way for a long while um you know history repeating itself and all that which which it and all that bad um in terms of this stuff so FR, so instead of just F says FR, and there's front right and then front left should be over here. Or Florida. So that's pretty neat. Little uh little differentiation. This one does not have it, nor does this one. Also neglected to mention there's a stripe on the bottom of that, the sill. And this one does not. You do have the Montreal Locomotive Works, Montreal Canada. The plate on the side there. Uh, this one, I feel like the plow is a bit different. Maybe I'm seeing things. Yeah, it's just the color. So since that one's painted, I guess it feels like it looks a bit different. And this one's just gray, obviously. But these things look very, very good. They've got class lights. They've got the Fabillion lights, you know. It's like uh, BC Rail was like, hey, Montreal Locomotive Works. We need lights. A lot of them. And uh, MLW is like... I got you, dog. And then there you got it. Just 500 lights on the front of the thing. So the trucks look very nice. You can really see a lot of the details with this kind of silvered finish. Um, just a lot, a lot of details. It's 
very sharp. Ooh, mama. And their wheels don't look weird. You know, the axles. It's, I feel like it's hard to find stuff in Train Some Classic where the axles don't look absolutely cartoony. These don't. Uh, D-Dub has been pretty much on point with that kind of stuff. They're not like super glossy and look like giant pizza pans. You know, they look very nice. You see a little GE logo on there. The brake piston. Look at that. Look at the cabling, man. Look at that. Ah. Gorge. Very gorge. Of course, the B unit. Let's take a look at this thing. Oh, Canada. Yeah, so I guess the Hosser would have gotten in... There's like a little door somewhere. It's probably not going to be back here. Dingus. There it is. Yeah, right there. And I, I think it's got a horn and a bell as well. It's, of course, got lights. And markers. Yeah, here's your sync with chime and your bell. So it could do it all, man. It's basically like a submarine. <laughs> a submarine in the locomotive world. Uh, and then you got these two. They're largely going to be the same. I think they all got the same horn and bell. We will get in one by one, and then we will... Uh, I got a little consist set up on a slight grade, and we'll just get a little chugging going and see what's what. But they look epic. I mean, the colors look good. They got just the right amount of wear. It's just... You, you literally don't have to say anything anymore about these guys. It's, uh... You know... It's good. Let's get on in here. Like you feel this thing in your chest sitting in it. It's uh it's probably super loud again, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just turn that down just just a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. It's still loud to me, but hopefully not loud to use. Use! I'm not Pennsylvanian, I swear. All right, anyway, the interior looks great again. Um, the lights look very nice, very natural. Should be able to open the window as per usual. Let's make sure that reflects outside. Indeed, it does. Be able to open the back door. That should reflect outside. It does. See, it looks pretty nice. It kind of looks like, uh, like a hard plastic... Um, you know, but it's all right. It's not too shab. Control stand looks pretty good. Here's all your your crazy Canadian friggin' light setup over here. <laughs> I mean, look at that. It's a Christmas tree. It looks like Christmas lights. Got your radio, Motorola. I wonder if there's um, chatter in this. I don't know. I know some of their other locos there were chatter. There's that. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Gauges look good. I mean, just look at the inside of this thing. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, I hear a little bit of radio now. I don't know if you can hear it over the endless, insane chugging. We'll go to the next view, which is down in the door. We'll be able to open that. And then the outer onto the front porch. And there you go. You can holler, Paul, sapper's ready! And then close the door. There we go. Nope. Okay. Grab it. Thank you. Nope. There we go. Very nice. So yeah, little things like that are cool. It's your speedo up top. Yeah, looks pretty good. Got a little hot plate back there for a hot potato or a hot cup of coffee. I don't know what that black square is in there. Um, I don't know if that's like a model issue or some kind of weird thing is. I don't know if that's supposed to be in there. Probably not. Um, but it is there. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, it looks good. The floor looks good. That old, just rough, worn wood. The ceiling, of course, looks good. The glass looks good. It's, you know, there's no crazy kind of dinginess to it. You can see the, the ghosting of the wiper over the grit, which is nice. You know, got some weathering across here. It's just across the board. It's, it's good stuff, man. Diesel Workshop. 
have, have been good to us North American uh, train sim enjoyers and I thank them for that personally let's see if any of these switches work what do we got here front number boards rear number boards platforms what's that nothing okay I'm zoomed all the way in too as well by the way sorry if none of this is really coming through I don't think any of those switches work nope it's getting El Capitan chair I am the captain now all right here's our rear headlights we'll leave those off for now let's see ground lights um walkway lights gauge lights okay those work the other two don't work huh lighting looks good it's just that kind of nice muted you know kind of golden amber color and not just extreme bright white um there's our headlights turn them bad boys all the way on main control gen field and engine control are on by default you cannot operate those uh, the radio is static. Let's check them brakes out. Not too bad. There are the lights on. They look very nice. God, look at that, man. If you saw that in the middle of the night, like, and you didn't hear it yet, you would likely think it is a uh, unidentified flying object. Uh, all right, so that's that. Can we mess with the the class lights? So none of that stuff is operable. I mean, it's model, it's not operable. Class light front, class light rear. All right, so they are on. It's red. Rojo. And they are on the rear as well. I forgot the... Uh, I forgore. All right, so I had to open up the manual. Because I forgot it was there. But you got a nice little manual telling you all about it. Uh, and your keyboard control is the reason I brought it up. So I could see it. See, beacon light M. These have beacon lights. So the class lights are C and shift C, and then the color is U and shift U. No U. Yeah, so I guess the, um, I guess there was just really one booster unit that, uh, one had to, the zigzaggy and one did not. All right, back to it. Let us get the read of this. We go boom, boom. All right, U shift U. There we go. There's white. So it's just red and white. No blue. Oh, no, there's blue too. Very cool. Okay. All right, so this is in the red, white, and blau uh, loco. Looks very nice. Let's go hop in this other one right quick, Maru. See if there's any difference. Uh, basically looks the same. Yeah, see, this one doesn't have the little black square over the hot plate, so that's some kind of... I don't know if that's like a missing texture, like a modeling issue or something, but this obviously doesn't have that that thing in the, uh, the hot plate there. Alright, let's click on the third one. The stripey boy. Looks samey again. And it looks as though this one doesn't have the hot plate issue either. Alright, enough sitting around. Let's run it. Alright guys, we got a little consist set up here. So I've got two A units and one B unit in the middle. Uh, nominal trains, probably... I uh, like 40 cars ish but uh let's go ahead and hop in and run this son of a gun take a look at it while it's running listen to it i want to see if it sounds any different than the uh canadian national uh 420 and all that good stuff we'll get the lights on there throw it fireworks got your number board that is in that comes on and does look very nice as well 
man, these things are just spicy. Alright, we ready to run? Alright, we are sitting on a 1% gradier. Let's throw that loco brake on there. Uh, where's the gauge lights? What did I, I just hit the I key not knowing what it did. <laughs> oh darn. What did we do? What did the I key do? Where the guage lights? I need the guage. There we go. Okay, now I can see them. Alright. That's just one notch. Get rid of the train brake. Two notch. There goes the amps. Wipe that independent brake all the way off. Oh, we're rolling backwards. Holy shnikes. All right, there's notch three. Things suddenly got a lot louder. There's notch four. We're still rolling backwards. That's fine. Looks like we're slowing up a little bit. Terrible hill start, but that's as to be expected with me. Let's go ahead and test that horn out. Okay. I mean, it sounds all right. It like it sounds okay, but the volume level of it is just not there. It sounds okay in the cab. It sounds a little chunky, a little uh, a little staticky, you know. It sounds pretty good in the cab. I don't really hear any loop or anything like that. But exterior, it is just way too quiet. Like, listen to that. That, that sounds like something that's like a mile away. Now, it doesn't help that these engines are loud as shit. I feel like, you know, the, the engine audio is a, is a bit loud. You know, it could come down maybe 20% or so. Okay, that's weird. So you can hear that better farther away. Okay, sounds about the same. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I guess there's no, like, real Doppler on this thing. Yeah, it, so, like I said, it sounds good, it just, it needs to be louder. Either that or it needs that little special thing where the horn quietens, is that a word, everything else, until the horn pull is done, and then the volume comes back. Um, I don't, I forget the term. But yeah, it's... Yeah, it sounds okay inside. It's just outside. They, they have definitely done a better job on horns with some of the other stuff. Namely, some of the Century Series, uh, the 424 packs. It's just super quiet. Uh, I think that's a K5? H? All bells are facing forward, obviously. It threw me off for a minute because it just looks like three, right? But then you got some sneaky boys up under there. Yeah, it's just way too quiet outside. Check the bell. It is animated. Very nice. The bell is too quiet as well. Yeah, so the, the, the horn and the bell could definitely be louder exterior-wise. I mean, it needs to match the interior sound, if at all. Um, you know, maybe even louder. I mean, they're, they're supposed to be loud. That is their purpose. You know, they're not there. It's just kind of like an afterthought. Let's give it another notch. can still hear a bit of clicking and looping in the audio. It's like the higher you get, the kind of the worst it becomes. I remember that from the Canadian National 420. 6969 for life. Not seven. Street beating the piss out of this thing right now.
I do like the spinner noises. I think they've had those originally, so I don't I don't really think the sounds have changed. But one thing that's nice that I always kind of gloss over with these and these workshop is the physics. You know, the simulation feels okay as well. It's not, you know, overpowered slot car crap like we tend to get for a lot of the North American stuff you get off the Steam store. Like this little, you know, train I got set up here, like you saw, we're on a 1% grade. It took a good while to get this thing rolling. We're still only doing six mile an hour, not seven. So, you know, if this were like another product of a three letter name, beginning with B and ending with M, we'd be going 200 mile an hour by now. Just a shame about that horn. I feel like the first C424 pack was just chef's kiss, you know, with like the horns. It each one had its own horn, and it was just they were they were good. The levels were good. You could hear them over the prime mover. It was just real nice. But uh, anyway, enough about that. I'll quit crying about the horn. It is important though, you know. I just feel like it needs to be louder. Um, it's like the up top is reflecting. Notch 7 sounds okay. I can still kind of hear a little pop, popping and cracking. Snap, crackle, pop. It's, it's there. It's just not as noticeable. Let's go ahead and go to run 8. Okay, that's 7. I'm an idiot. That was 6 before. This is 7. A little bit more rumble. You can definitely hear that popping sound. A lot more prominent now. That could be cleaned up. I mean, you just open up Audacity and clean that little pop area up and smooth it out. Bob is your freaking uncle. It's perfect. You're done. So it's just that little extra, you know, step that that would be nice to have than not having the popping and looping sound. All right, running. not good either. So it's it's one of those things where it's it's a, a tale of two cities, a coin with two sides, you know. It's so run eight did not sound very good in the cab. It was very prominently looping. Uh, but outside, the exterior, you don't really hear it. So these are things that need to be evened out. You know what I'm saying? Um, just little things like that. When you start coming out with, with a lot of this content, and not like they're just shooting it out of their ass, you know, left and right. This stuff takes a while. They take their time. They, you know, they, they do their studies. They figure stuff out. Um, it, not derail right there um you know but but the, the little extra mile that would be nice as far as sounds go could immensely help i mean it could take an already great product to you know through the roof even better um yeah it goes boom boom And you, you just can't sit and listen to that forever and ever. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things that I, I hear stuff like that and I can't unhear it. I wish I could, um, but I can't. I just notice stuff like that. And that's just the way it is. So let's go ahead and throttle down. You know, the, the overall sound samples are nice. I'm, I'm not just sitting here trying to do a wine fest, not by any means. The overall sound samples are definitely nice. They just need to be smoothened out, evened out a little bit, edited a little bit, uh, and tweaked here and there. And, I mean, you've got a damn near perfect product on your hands then. Right now, this is a solid, you know, 8, 9 out of 10. But it's, 
you know, it's just hard not to notice these things when this stuff comes out and some of the stuff doesn't change, you know what I mean? So you get used to a level and then it's like, okay, and you kind of get stagnant at that level and then it's like, okay, where's the next, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard not to expect something else when you just get, uh, you get used to, you know, some, some niceties. So they, they've got everything down, right? They've got everything down, obviously. It's just the sounds could use a little more work. And then they kick their feet up and have a cerveza because this stuff is uh, is really, really good. You know, even barring the sound issues, you know, this 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 all I use. I use, you know, Diesel Workshop, Searchlight stuff, uh, or, you know, mods. That's it. I literally don't use anything else, so. I'll notch it down again. All right, we're going uphill, but uh, we'll just have a little funsies and dump on it. Yeah, see, even dumping the pipe, man, even uphill, 1%. It still took a little while. We were only going like 10 mile an hour. So they, you know, they tick a lot of boxes. Diesel workshop. The BC Rail M420 pack for $14. I'll link it down below as usual. Excellent product. Whenever, you know, whenever Diesel Workshop releases something, they got my attention 100, 100%. But that's it for today, guys. Hope you found the video informative and somewhat useful. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.